Welcome to Defending Digital. I'm Chad Werner. Today I'm going to show you how to use the Google Chrome browser more securely and privately. So first you need to go into your settings, which you can do in the top right corner, these three dots here, and go down to settings. And you'll see there are several sections of settings here. And what you'll see in this people section is going to depend on whether you have Chrome sign-in enabled. And that is done uh, in the advanced settings. Here there's allow Chrome sign-in. Um, so I have that disabled and so my settings may look different than what you have here. Um, so you've got the, um, if you do have Chrome sign-in turned on, there are a couple of things to look at here. Um, there will be an option for um, syncing It'll say sync to configure advanced sync settings. And you can use those toggles to choose which of the items are synced to your account. Uh, there'll also be some encryption options and you want to choose to encrypt data, synced data with your own sync password. And the reason for that is if you set your own password, then you prevent Google and others from reading the data that you have synced to your account. In the autofill section, um, you've got passwords, so I recommend going in here and disabling this offer to save passwords. Uh, I recommend using a password manager such as LastPass instead. Then you have payment methods. Um, and here I also recommend disabling save and fill payment methods. Uh, again, I would recommend instead storing payment info in a password manager like LastPass. Addresses and more. And here you can uh, disable this too. Uh, again, a full featured password manager like LastPass will have an option for filling in this type of contact information if you need it. We'll skip the appearance section and go to search engines. And so here you have uh, a choice of what kind of search engines you want to use. Um, so you can use Google, which is uh, very common, uh, or you can go to manager search engines and you can choose others. So um, for example, DuckDuckGo is a uh, privacy focused um, search engine that does not track users. And so um, there are other options that you can use if you'd like to do that. Then uh, as we scroll down here, you want to expand advance if it's not already expanded and we're gonna spend some time in privacy and security. Uh, so we've got allow Chrome sign in. Uh, we discussed that already. I recommend disabling this just to give Google less of your data. Use a prediction service to help complete searches and URLs typed in the address bar. Uh, so I recommend disabling this to prevent Google from recording what you type into the address bar. Um, now, it does make searching faster to have this on, so you just need to choose um, how you wanna weigh your privacy and convenience. Use a prediction service to load pages more quickly. And uh, according to Google, quote, if you turn the setting on, websites and any embedded content that are preloaded may set and read their own cookies as if you had visited them, even if you don't, end quote. So I do recommend disabling this. If you have a slow internet connection, I can see how this setting could be helpful, uh, but you know, if, you're, if your internet connection is fast enough, shouldn't be really a, a benefit and you just need to weigh the privacy implications here with the convenience of the feature. Use a web service to help resolve navigation errors. Uh, according to Google, quote, when you can't connect to a web page, you can get suggestions for other pages like the one you're trying to reach. Chrome sends Google the web address of the page you're trying to reach to offer you, offer you suggestions. Uh, so for similar reasons, as I've discussed, I recommend disabling that. Then you have safe browsing, which it says here protects you and your devices from dangerous sites. Um, and Google says, quote, when you visit a website, Chrome checks it against a list of websites stored on your computer that are known to be bad. If the website matches anything on the list, your browser sends a partial copy of the address to Google to find out if you're visiting a risky site, end quote. I do recommend enabling this. Because so little data is shared with Google, it's a minimal privacy concern, and it's worth it for the additional security. Help improve safe browsing sends some system information and page content to Google. I generally like to share data that helps make software and services better as long as my data is anonymized. You may choose to disable this if you'd rather not send your data, even if it's anonymized, to Google. Automatically send usage stats and crash reports to Google. Google says, quote, the statistics do not include any personal information. 
Crash reports contain system information gathered at the time of the crash and may contain web page URLs or personal information depending on what was happening at the time of the crash. No information can be inferred about any particular user's activity. End quote. And again, I do generally like to share data that helps make software and services better as long as it's anonymized. But if you prefer, you can disable that. Use a web service to help resolve spelling errors. Smarter spell checking by sending what you type in the browser to Google. Uh, I do recommend disabling this uh, because it sends what you type to Google. Um, so you will, if you if you disable this, you do still get spell checking, uh, just provided by Chrome's own dictionary rather than sending what you're typing to Google. Send a do not track request with your browsing traffic. I recommend enabling this. Uh, unfortunately, many websites do not support this. It doesn't make any difference if you set this, uh, but for those that do support it, it's it's worth having that on. Allow sites to check if you have payment methods saved. I recommend disabling this. I have not had a need for it because I don't store my payment info in Chrome anyway. Uh, as I said, I recommend using a password manager like LastPass to store payment info instead. But uh, if you have a true need for it, uh, I guess you can enable that. Then uh, you've got content settings, and this uh, is actually a, a pane that you can uh, enable here or jump into. Um, you've got a whole bunch of different settings that are underneath this content settings. So um, as we go through here, um, under cookies, if I click this, um, then I recommend blocking third-party cookies, so toggling this here to on. Um, third-party cookies are cookies from other websites than the one that you're on at the moment. They're often, but not always, used for marketing and tracking purposes. So disabling them may cause problems. Chrome will show a cookie icon in the browser. Uh, let me see if I can find that. Okay, so here I'm on a website, and here it is showing me um, that cookies have been blocked. And so you'll see that in any site that, uh, that you have that. Um, and then you can click on that and choose to allow that site to set cookies in the future. So if you, if you need to, you can go in here and um, see what is going on, what was allowed, what was blocked. Um, and you could go in here and choose to allow um, cookies if you really need to uh, for those sites. All right, cookies. Uh, then you've got pop-ups and redirects, and uh, that's set to blocked, and uh, that is what, what uh, is recommended. So I go in here. Okay, so it is set to blocked. And you have ads. So those are blocked. If I enable that, it says to allow. So I don't want that. Keep it unblocked. And then if I jump back to content settings. Here at the bottom, I have clear browsing data. And you can use this to selectively delete data from Chrome. So if I go into here, um, so you can choose basic or advanced. Advanced just shows you more options. Uh, you can choose what items you want to clear as well as the time range uh, for which you want to clear them. So some other tips for using Chrome safely. Um, Chrome has made a big deal about um, securing your connection between your browser and websites via HTTPS. So the address bar will warn you when you're on a site that's not secure. Um, so here I'm looking at uh, defendingdigital.com. I see the padlock, I can click it. It says connection is secure, there's a valid certificate. Um, now if I jump over to another site, here it says it's not secure and I can click on that. Your connection to the site is not secure. Uh, you should not enter any sensitive information on this site, for example, passwords or credit cards, because it could be stolen by attackers. And right now, this is kind of a, a light gray. Let's say I go over to the contact page and uh, watch up here. And as I start typing into this form, it turns red and I get an exclamation mark. And, and Chrome is just really trying to let me know, hey, you, you know, you, your data that you're typing in here is uh, not going to be encrypted. So uh, just uh, a feature there. Um, so you do want to look for um, that padlock, look for that security on any um, sites where you're entering sensitive information, financial, medical, personally identifiable information, anything like that. Um, but 
not all websites that have this are legitimate. There are malicious websites that will put a TLS or SSL certificate on them, and uh, and so it will look secure, but it's still a bad website. Um, so you just want to make sure that um, if you are um, going to be entering sensitive information and the website is a, a good one, that it, it does have um, a certificate in place that is encrypting your connection. Another nice feature, which uh, other browsers have as well, is uh, incognito mode, which is uh, kind of a private browsing mode. Um, so you can go over here to uh, a new incognito window, um, and that will open a new window here. Um, and what this does is limits the amount of data that the browser stores about the browsing that you do while you're in this mode. Um, so you get kind of an idea here. Um, Chrome will not save browsing history, cookies and site data, information that you enter in forms, but um, websites that you visit will still uh, potentially have access to what you do. Um, if you are on a network at an employer or a school or whatever organization you are um, using their network, uh, could it possibly have access to what you're doing? Um, as well as your internet service provider, they're going to be able to uh, to see what you're doing as well if you're not using a, a VPN or some other way of hiding uh, what you're doing. Uh, so a few other items here. Um, some extensions that are useful to security and privacy. Uh, we've got HTTPS everywhere. Uh, this forces web pages to use HTTPS, a secure connection, whenever it's available. If the website doesn't support it, well, this isn't going to help. But uh, as long as the website does support it, then this will um, switch you over to that. LastPass is a password manager. Um, this is uh, the one that I've used for years. This is one that I like. Um, there are many others that are available. uBlock Origin. Uh, this is a web content blocker. It's fairly technical, so if you find this to be overwhelming um, for blocking scripts and other content on websites, then another one to consider is Privacy Badger, um, which is a, a simpler alternative. Now, something you should know is that Chrome extensions uh, are disabled in incognito mode, so that uh, prevents them from recording your browsing history when you're in incognito mode, um, but there are some of these plugins that you do want to be active when you're in incognito mode. Uh, like HTTPS Everywhere and uBlock Origin or Privacy Badger. Um, so what you uh, want to do to enable them, um, so you go to Chrome Extensions, and this will show you the extensions that you have. Um, and what you can do is if you click Details for any of these, so let's say that uh, HTTPS Everywhere, I want that to work even in incognito mode. So I go to Details, and scroll down and here there's a toggle for allow in incognito and so you want to enable that toggle it on for any extensions where you want them to work in incognito mode and uh, there is a guide at defendingdigital.com that goes along uh, with this video has all of these uh, same po same uh, tips and more um, as well as uh, several other privacy and security guides so you can uh, learn more at defendingdigital.com.